Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm so glad you joined me today. We are talking about what not to do in Rome. And unfortunately, I learned this the hard way. I hate to admit this as a travel blogger, but Rome absolutely kicked my butt. I don't think it's the fault of the city so much as my navigation and planning for it. One day I will get back and I will right my wrongs, but in the meantime, I thought maybe I could help you guys not make the same mistakes and have an amazing time in Rome. As always, please give it a big thumbs up if you find anything in here useful. And I also have a link to my blog post with all of this information in it. So if I go too fast or if you want to pin something for later, just click on that link. It will take you to the blog with all of the nitty gritty details. Let's get into it. forget that there are multiple train stations. It was definitely cheaper to buy our train tickets in advance. Um, so I did that. And I even remember thinking when I purchased them, the train station that we were coming into was different than the train station we were going out of. And I made myself a mental note and I thought, I'll remember. <laughs> I totally didn't remember. After a few weeks in Italy and then exhaustion, we went back to the same train station that we arrived at. We were there early. We sat, we had a croissant, we had cappuccinos, and then we went to get on our train and it wasn't on the board. And we talked to the guy and long story short, we missed our train. And then I had to buy tickets the day of, and that was a hundred plus dollar mistake, which was a big bummer. So just remember a lot of cities in Italy, there is only one train station, but in Rome, I think there are three, but I know there's at least two because we use both of them uh, poorly. <laughs> Next thing, do not try to do it all. Rome is so huge and it's so spread out. And a lot of cities, I mean, even Florence has a lot to see, but you can actually walk to most of it. Rome is entirely different. You're going to need to take transportation. Everything is spread out. Everything has lines for like eternity. <laughs> So you really, really need to plan ahead and you need to not overbook. There's so much to see and do in Rome that honestly you could, uh, I don't know, just don't. Pick two or three top sites that you must see of the major sites and then leave time in your schedule just to breathe and to wander the streets and to just, I mean, there's history around every corner. So you're not missing out on anything. You will thank me later, I promise. All right, the next thing not to do in Rome, don't cut the taxi line even if you're invited to the front. This sounds obvious, and actually I feel like I heard this before we went, or something along these lines, but when you arrive with all your luggage, if you have kids with you, kids, a dog if you have a dog, which we did, <laughs> everything that you know goes out the window, and so there's this line of taxis, which are basically just these white cars that say taxi on the top. And then there's this queue up line. So we got in the queue up line, and then these guys that are kind of working the line called us out, and said, hey, we've got one for you. It was in the line, farther back in the line. And we were like, great, maybe because we have a family or whatever, they're sorting us out that way. We plop our luggage in, partway through, I realized this car doesn't have a meter. I don't actually think it was a taxi. I think it was just somebody wanting a few extra bucks. When we arrived to our destination, the price that he had told me went up. Another mistake we made in Rome was exiting the train station without stopping for a bus route map. From the train station in Rome, we just took a taxi, so I didn't think about stopping. But it is so helpful. You need to know what the bus stops are because they don't announce them. So if you don't have a bus route map, you're... <laughs> You're kind of at a loss. You're like, do I get off here? Don't I get off here? I finally did discover, if you make the same mistake, you can pull up Google Maps on your phone and just follow the blue dot and then you should know about when your stop is. It'd be better not to use the data and just have a bus route map. Okay, another tip. This is a big one and I know that you've probably heard this. So I heard this, I knew this. They say you have to, have to, have to buy your tickets in advance for the Vatican Museums, Colosseum, Roman Forum. When you go to book them online, there is, I think it's a four euro booking fee. Times that by four people, times that by multiple venues and multiple cities in Italy. I thought I could save money and just go to some central ticket office when I arrived since we had the time. <sighs> Biggest 
biggest mistake for not that much savings. So do not do that. <laughs> I know you're probably smarter than me and just pay the money. Um, I love finding a deal and a lot of times that works out great, but in this situation, it it bit my butt hard. So either you're left paying a big fee for a skip the line ticket, or you're just stuck standing in line for two, three, four hours for each venue. Book them online, pay the extra fee, it's totally worth it. All right, another thing not to do in Rome, do not forget to pay attention to holiday schedules. We were going near Easter, I knew Easter Sunday and Easter Monday, a lot of things are closed. San Calisto was supposed to be open. So we hopped off the bus. <laughs> there was a group of us. I wasn't alone in this. They were closed because of Easter Monday. So we were stuck. There was like a shoulder this big on the road. And there were these cars going by and we're just standing there with our kids and definitely not the most ideal of circumstances. Next thing not to do in Rome, and I know I'm going to get a lot of pushback for this, but don't do the Vatican museums. Or at least don't do them how we did them. If you're going to do them, definitely book in advance. But even that, it was just so crowded, shoulder to shoulder the whole time through. It was not enjoyable. Two hours of just being herded from room to room. By the time we got to the Sistine Chapel, our girls wanted nothing more than to get out of there. And then once you reach the Sistine Chapel, there's just people shushing you the whole time and saying, move along, move along, move along. That is just really not fun. I was going to say don't do it at all, but I was just talking with a friend today and she said, please don't say that. <laughs> she loved it, but they did it differently. She's done it a couple times. The first time they had a private tour, which I'm sure cost a lot of money, but I think they got in even before other people. So if you're going to do it, I would say definitely splurge on either a private tour or she said there was a tour with about eight to 10 people that she purchased on Viator.com. And she said that tour was amazing. So if you plan on doing the Vatican museums, I think that's the only way to go because otherwise it's just really unenjoyable and a waste of your time. So the last thing you should not do in Rome is expect perfection. I know that you've planned very carefully and uh, gosh, it's such a big city and there's so much to account for. Definitely plan ahead, get your tickets ahead, do all the right things, but you're human, you're gonna make mistakes and you just gotta enjoy the journey Journey, enjoy the adventure and don't be too hard on yourself or the other person in your party that might be doing the planning. Give them grace. Grace, grace, grace all around and you're gonna have an amazing time. All right, that's it for today guys. Please remember give a thumbs up, give a like, hit that notification bell and I will see you next time. Be sure to hit that notification bell or tune in again next week for my top five sites in Rome.